Okay, let's start by isolating this kind of hook shape. So select this loop of faces, hide it using H, then select this loop of faces and hide it as well. Now let's come to the front and we can see that it's perfectly isolated. So we're just going to pick it up using L and then separate by selection like we did before. You can now unhide the faces and we're going to look for artifacts. So the rear is pretty good looking, I would say. Not too many issues there. While the front here, you can see an artifact there. So how you can fix this is usually by uh, reducing the poly count of that area, either by um, reducing the subdivision surface level or removing some edge loop. What I can also do here is remove the vertex at the bottom, but you're going to see that it's taking me quite a while to realize what causes this issue. So I'm just going to tell you that in advance so you can work on your own model in the meantime and just not replicate what I'm doing right now. So I'm just going to dissolve this here and try to reduce the poly count in the area. And then I'm going to try to form up quads and get rid of the triangle that we had in the beginning, because that may have been the cause of the issue. So what I'm going to do is add some loop cuts over here and try to make it all quads, just like that. And then I'm going to remove this little vertex around here. And you can see it's not perf perfect yet, but what we can do is move the vertices of the fender around to hide this. Now I will just reduce the subdivision surface count to one. And then I'm, I will just move some vertices around. Just like that, until it's just hidden and nobody is, nobody will notice. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna make it one more time, just so you guys can uh, follow along if you didn't before because that was kind of a messy process, but yeah, quickly, let's just do this. Okay, fill this, then add loop cuts over there. Then fill up that area with quads, ideally. Those two go at the bottom, just like that, and use this area to create a quad. So, Every method will work as long as it doesn't uh, look bad. <laughs> so really, if it looks good to you, then just continue with this. If it doesn't, then try to rework it or just uh, ask in the Discord or in the YouTube comments. I'm going to try to answer them all. Okay, and now I'm just going to make this shape black and we're going to be good to go. All right, let's continue. Let's do what we wanted to do first, which is split the front bumper. Now the rear is pretty easy to isolate. For this part, we can pretty easily hide this using H then L to split this apart. Now, if you wanted to make it uh, cleaner or more realistic, I would try to move this panel gap elsewhere, but we're going to do this later on. I'm going to rework it so it looks cleaner. Okay, so for this part now, hide this loop, then separate it from here, add loop cuts here and loop cuts there. And I'm going to straighten it later on, but you can do it right now if you feel like it. Uh, straighter panel gaps will definitely look better than wobbly ones. 
least on close-ups. Like from this distance, it won't show much, but it's always nice to have this uh, extra detail. For the back, let's try to make this black. See if it looks good. Not really, not doing it for me, at least for now. Okay, the hood now, and the windshield, my bad. I'm gonna separate new vert C's that I created to create a windshield. So selecting all of them, I'm gonna move them a tiny bit, just like that. Select all of them, now you're gonna extrude them and remove them from the, the shrink-wrapped group. Now don't worry too much about it, about this weird bump. It's because some vertices are assigned to the group and some are not. You can just remove all of them from the group and it should fix it. Now I want to scale them on the x-axis from the mirror point. Just like that, until they touch the A pillar. Just like this. This may be a bit too much since it's going into the hood, but we can just replace. We can just move them around. Like I will do right here. Move those there. Slide them if needed. I'm gonna delete this bottom row. It won't be of much use for now. So selecting the middle vertices, we're gonna move them on the Y axis. I don't know why that was so shaky. Let's move them again by deselecting the outer row. And then we can just shade this mode. And you can see it's pretty bumpy right now. And this is not what you want. So I'm just going to move this down a bit. Right there. Voila. Okay, let's now focus on this part. Add a loop cut there. And we're gonna move this one closer to the pillar. Just like this. Move it down. Now those three should be removed and we need to move them up. So it continues the curvature that we had on the roof. So I'm going to play with this until I have no bumps left. So you can see here the middle is quite uh, indented. So I'm going to move it outward or inward for you. You may need to do that. Same stuff for here. Move this here. Okay, this looks better. Now we will rename this windshield. Uh, actually, we're going to rename it windshield base mesh. That's going to be better. In the material, what we will need is a glass material which has just transmission to one, roughness to zero. Just like that. You can set the IOR to 1.5 if you want, but I don't see much difference, so I don't do it. You can turn on the screen space reflections if you plan on using EV a lot. And it should look transparent. And make sure the solidify modifier is set uh, to not only the rim, but every faces. Okay, going back into edit mode with auto merge on, we want to create a loop that follows the contour. So we're going to crank subdivision to four. Actually, uh, don't do the loop following the contour yet. Yeah. Um, shaded smooth, everything. Yes, just like this. And 
and I'm just trying some something here. Just want to see why we have that bump, but it's probably because our top row is assigned to the shrink wrap group, which we can just remove. We're not going to need it for now. Okay, so this these needs to be moved a tiny bit before we continue with the base mesh of the windshield. Now this we can fix quite easily. You can reassign some faces to the pillar or you can just leave it at that if you want. Okay, so hide it in renders and just like we did before, we're going to rename it windshield. We will reduce its poly count, uh, it's not its poly count, but its subdivision count to two. Select the shrink wrap target to the windshield base mesh. Set the subdivision to two. Um, you may need to turn off the solidify modifier of your windshield base mesh if you didn't do it. Then you're going to add loop cut here and merge them to have a loop cut that follows the contour. Like that. Now this material, you're going to create a second slot with glass, with the same glass material. Then you're going to create a third slot with um, a black plastic material. Doesn't need to be the same uh, plastic material that we have on the outside. I'm just going to create a dark and smooth plastic, which is just a principal BSDF. And then you're going to assign to this contour faces the second uh, glass material. And under the solidify, you're going to go to the material and offset. You're going to select the offset to one. And yes, um, select your windshield base mesh and just hide in renders and uh, viewport the solidify. But yes, uh, put the material offset to one and you're going to see that the edge of your windshield now has a black rim of plastic around while if we didn't we would have to create a new part just for that so this facilitates it quite a lot facilitates the creation of uh, of those plastic trims inside of windshields quite a lot so i'm just going to go into edit mode and move faces around and do the same thing with uh, the second glass material to have plastic on the inside then I'm going to delete those, add more loop cuts, connect them together over here, connect those two faces, delete this one, not the edge, but just the face, and face up that area, just like this. Now you can play with it a bit more by adding loop cuts like I'm going to do here. Just slide some vertices around until you're happy with the shape. This again is quite a big advantage of shrink wrapping. You can just play with the topology without affecting the surface quality. So for this, I want to slide them down because it's a bit too apparent for my likings. Same for here. And you can see how it looks in cycles. Pretty damn good. And that's the other technique that I developed I believe on my own to create cars. So I'm just going to make this straighter over here and separate it to have kind of a trim going around and uh, remove all the materials and assign it a black plastic. So we have a trim following the contour of the windshield. That's plastic. Just like this gonna add an extra touch and you can just rename it windshield trim or windshield contour or whatever and that's it for this part thanks see you tomorrow